Hello and welcome to today's Coffee Break Conversation. Today I am joined by Amy Hayes, who is a pioneer evangelist for Church Army. Amy works in the Selby Centre of Mission over in Yorkshire. So good afternoon, Amy. Thank you for joining us today for our Coffee Break Conversation. Um, although I know you're not a massive fan of coffee, so we're going to have our tea break uh, oh. conversation. Uh, just in honour of you. So for those of you that don't know you, obviously I've known you since you were at school, uh, but that was a long time ago. But there's others that don't. So do you want to tell us a wee bit about who you are and uh, what you do? Yeah, sure. So um, my name, as Andrew said, is Amy. And <laughs> I am pioneer evangelist in Selby Centre of Mission, uh, which is in North Yorkshire uh, with Church Army. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Uh, yeah, so grew up in Portadown. Obviously, don't have a Yorkshire accent. And uh, yeah, what else would you like to know? Yeah, so um, obviously you work with Church Army over there. Yes. Uh, so uh, your job obviously involves faith, I hope. Uh, but do you want to tell us a wee bit of kind of about like your own faith journey, how you came to faith? Yeah, so I was kind of I was brought up in the church, uh, a Presbyterian church actually, um, and. Yeah, like was brought up going to Sunday school and all that. Um, but then when I was around seven or eight, my family kind of imploded. Um, and it was just really hard. And I, and I started to hate God. Um, and I was a kid that ripped up Bibles. Um, but somewhere in the midst of that, God still kept pursuing me. Um, so I remember sitting in my mate Mucker's house and uh, she started dancing to this Christian music. And I was like, Mucker, is that Christian? Um, and she's like, yeah. I was like, turn it off. I don't want to hear it. Um, and she's like, why is it Mucker? I'm only dancing to it. And of course, me being super cool, as I was as a 13-year-old. Um, cringy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, right, whatever. Um, and yeah, the, the course of the song was, Hey, little girl, with the pressures of the world on your shoulders. Don't say that it's over. I've heard your prayers. Just cast your cares and I'll be there so don't you fear. And I knew God was speaking directly to me um, because I, I, I didn't really want to be alive anymore because things had got so hard and God was directly speaking into the middle of that. Um, so that night I went home, I gave my life to Jesus because obviously I wasn't going to be up there and then with Mucker there because, you know, it was really hard and stuff. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, that kind of started the journey. Um, and then when I was 16, I did a week of servant evangelism with a thing called Expression in Portadown. Yeah. And during that week, I encountered the Holy Spirit. And what that looked like for me was um, that I was just given such a deep love for the town um, and such a deep hunger for, for the Bible. So every break time and lunchtime, I'd have like a little pocket-sized Bible I'd fit it in my blazer. Um, and I was just like, want to know what, what God was saying. And, um, and every Sunday morning before church, I would get up and prayer walk around the town. Um, so yeah, that was some of the, some of the earliest days. Um, and a lot has happened between my teenage years and now, but yeah, that was kind of how it all kicked off, I suppose. Yeah, no, sounds a good story. So two questions off the back of that. Um, please tell me your friend's actual name wasn't Mucker. <laughs> No, but we called each other mucker. So, right, okay. uh, that's all right. Her name was Kendall. Her name still is Kendall. She hasn't changed it to mucker. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Mucker really suits her. Uh, but she was like the worst Christian ever in school. So like she, uh, she was always in the principal's office on a Friday afternoon for some nonsense that she'd got up to, whether it be trespassing or walking down the corridor with a bit on her head and got, got pushed into the classroom and just shoot. So she was like the worst Christian, but she always prayed for me, yeah. even though I hated it. Um, so, yeah, still in contact now. She's good crack. Brilliant. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you're called Mucker, then, you know, give us a wee tag below. We'd love to uh, link in with you and hear some more stories about you, Amy. Um, and the other thing you'd mentioned there was your family imploded. So obviously that was like a big thing for you. And, you know, we may have a few young people ourselves who are going through that. Is there one key piece of advice you would give to them from that period in time of your life? Yeah, it's not always going to be like that. Um, so, um, yeah, my family didn't get back together. Um, and that was really painful. Um, 
but God restores all things. And it might not look like the way that we want it to look like. Um, but the one of the things that really stuck with me was Psalm 68, verse 5. A father to the fatherless and a defender of widows is God. Um, and there's something about the way God connects us with other people to get us through. Um, so yeah, just, just keep going. It won't always be like that. And it's going to be better than we ever imagined. So Amy, you work for Church Army. Um, I'm sure that's very exciting job. What does a normal week look like for you? And uh, how has that changed with the COVID situation? Run? So yeah, a normal a normal week would be uh, going to school uh, on Mondays and running an after schools club. Um, yeah, running a women's Bible study type thing. I say type thing because it's not your traditional Bible study. It's, it's with a bunch of largely on church folk. Um, well, people that grew up on church, uh, don't mind Fergus, he's just uh, leaving. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, doing some pastoral visits, one-to-one -one stuff. Um, some Fridays we would do a thing called Edge Together, which is a bit of a social gathering. Uh, kind of a bit of a family get, church family get together. Um, but it's also a stepping stone for people that don't f quite feel bold enough to go to church. Um, so that they can kind of get to know us beforehand. Um, and then Sunday we run our fresh expression of church. So it's pretty much a church plant on the estate. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun and a lot of crazy. Like you never know what you're going to get from one day to the next. And it's one of the reasons I love my job. Um, but yeah, ultimately my job is about coming up with creative ways to engage people with the gospel. Um, and often people that have never heard it before. Um, so one of the other things that I sometimes do is paper mache with someone who really struggles with their mental health. Um, and, you know, for the first year, there hasn't been any chat about Jesus. But just a couple of weeks ago, um, we spent a good two hours just chatting about Jesus and the gospel. So it, it's that building relationship thing. With COVID, uh, things have massively changed. So we have become very good friends with Zoom. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, ha has its upsides and downsides. Um, so, yeah, so Gab, our women's Bible study thing, uh, runs on Zoom. And instead of doing our after schools club, uh, we are doing an online kids club, um, which has been a lot of fun, but a massive learning curve, because I've never done that kind of stuff online before. Or, yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah. Big change, but still trying to connect with folk. Um, yeah, just doing whatever needs done, really. Yeah, I think I think we've all hit that sort of curve of like, oh, we now have to go online, and we're saying, well, boys and girls, and we're praying that they're shouting back at us, and we're not just randomly talking to an empty room. It's 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 all very strange. So, how has your faith um, encouraged and helped you um, during this time? I, I suppose for me, it's that thing of uh, when the whole thing kicked in that's kind of a pioneer's dream situation, not people getting sick, right? Just to clarify. <laughs> um, but no, normal, normality stops. So I was quite excited by that prospect and quite excited by the chance to, to do something new. And, um, I, and for me, the thing that's unshakable in that is Jesus. Um, so Jesus hasn't changed. Jesus still wants to pursue people. Um, so how do we make that happen? Well, not make it happen, but you know, facilitate that kind of encounter. Um, so yeah, I suppose um, it's just been learning to like a new rhythm of connecting with Jesus. Um, so for me, what that looks like is uh, morning prayer every morning, just getting up, setting out, uh, trying to establish a rhythm. Um, but also reading again and journaling again um, and just finding God in this because one of my good friends um, at Bible College always said, God is in the midst, he's in the mess and he's in the mis mystery. Um, so if that is true, then we can find God in this yeah. um, and it gives us a chance to see God in a whole new way. Um, which is, for me, is really exciting. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's really good. Um, so 
thinking about kind of one of the things we've been asking people to do is uh, share a word of encouragement or, or something that they feel God's put in their heart um, at this time. Um, have you got something you'd like to share with our young people? <clears throat> yeah. So uh, this was a bit of advice that was given to me when I was about 17 or 18 um, by one of my mentors. And it's based on Exodus 33, 11, uh, which says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Um, and I think this time, like never before, gives us an opportunity to spend concentrated times with Jesus. It, you know, in a way that you, you guys will probably never have the same chance again. Um, so, you know, at the minute we're locked down, kind of. You know, we can still go out and about and go for walks and stuff, but, you know, our schedules are, are cleared in a way that they haven't been before. What would it look like if we stayed in the tent like Joshua? Because before Joshua ever took any city, whether it be Jericho or anywhere else, he was a tent dweller. He stayed in the presence of God. So what would it look like for you guys in Bali Gaon to stay in the tent for a bit longer? And what what impact is that going to have in the future? Because one day you will live in the live in the fruit of this moment. Um, so how are you investing in that? What might God say to you in this time that will then propel you forward in the future? Um, so yeah, my encouragement is spend time with Jesus in whatever way that looks like for you, and and see what He wants to do not just through you but also in you, because God cares about character. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the thing is a lot of our young people are struggling with that change in rhythm um, and, and they're still trying to find uh, a new rhythm and, and, and mix that in with schoolwork and everything else that's going on. So no, hopefully they will find that really, really, really helpful. Um, so we're almost at the end of our uh, tea break. Uh, I remember, I remember it's not coffee, it's tea. Uh, <laughs> Amen. But we, we've been asking people who have been coming on doing these conversations if they've anything that we can be praying for you guys for. Um, so what, what would be you know, one or two key things that you would like us to pray for you for at the time? Um, so tomorrow we are going to be delivering 100 craft packs across the estate um, that has a, a flyer in about Kids Club. Mm -hmm. Biggest prayer right now is that local people would really engage with that, um, that young kids would engage with these stories, uh, would find God in them, and that they would share that with their families. So if you could be praying for that, that would be absolutely incredible. Yeah, no problem, definitely. It sounds like Fergus agrees there. Uh, in the background. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we were praying for that, definitely. So unfortunately, like as I said, I've known you for years and I was, I was kind of, you know, obviously looking forward to hearing some embarrassing stories, but unfortunately we're out of time. You know, look how, how things work out. I'm not gonna to get to hear any stories, but of course, there wouldn't be anything that I've ever done in my many years of knowing you that were embarrassing. Um, but thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's been great to catch up with you. And uh, next time you're over in Northern Ireland, you're going to have to come up and uh, see us all and uh, share some more with us. But thank you very much. And I'll see you soon. See you soon, Andrew. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>